Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to be downloading and installing Metasploitable 2 uh, on VMware, alright? So let's get started. Now this is going to be very, very important. So what I want you to do is just open up your browser and you can just do a quick Google search for Metasploitable 2. All right. So once you've Google searched that, as you can see, it's going to, uh, it's going to give you some results. Uh, you want to make sure you go to the sourceforge.net link. All right. So it's going to be available at sourceforge.net. This is the best way to download it and get it on your computer. All right. So click on the link and it's going to take you to sourceforge.net. And uh, it's really very simple. What you want to do is just hit download the latest version, which is Metasploitable 2. And uh, you might be asking, well, what exactly is Metasploitable 2? Well, uh, what Metasploitable is, as you can see written right here, it is an intentionally vulnerable Linux virtual machine. All right, so this virtual machine can be used to conduct security training, test security tools, and practice common penetration testing techniques, exactly what we're trying to do in this course. All right, so why am I using Metasploitable 2? Well, the reason I'm using it is it best emulates a target that is vulnerable and it will allow us to see the type of ports and the services that are running on these ports and how we can exploit them. But in this case, we're going to be looking at how we can, uh, you know, scan a target for these ports and uh, then furthermore, how you can exploit them. All right. So uh, what it's really very simple. Just hit download uh, and uh, it's about 873 megabytes. So it's a relatively large file, but uh, just get it downloaded. It's a direct download. And uh, once you're done, I already have mine on my desktop and uh, it's a zip file, I believe. Let me just check the extension. Should be a zip file. Oh, yes, it is a zip file. So the next step is to extract the zip file. All right. So you can use your Windows extract tool or if you're on Linux, it's pretty much simple. Just right click and extract it. I'm on Windows. I'm going to be demonstrating this on Windows uh, because I already have VMware installed. Um, so there we are. It's going to start extracting it and uh, just give it a few seconds. All right. So once the file is extracted, it's going to give you this very uh, cool looking folder. So once I open that up, uh, it's going to give us another folder. And inside there we have our VMware files. And uh, yeah, once you have all of these, we're ready to move to the next step. All right, so now I want you to open up your VMware player, which I already have here. I do use uh, Workstation Pro, but uh, for this demonstration, we're going to stick with VMware Workstation player. So I'm just going to open it up. All right, give it a few seconds. There we are. Okay, now obviously you're not going to have uh, any virtual machines uh, like I do in here. So don't worry about that. What you want to do is you want to go into open a virtual machine. And it's going to prompt you to select your uh, your directory. So I'm using uh, my desktop. That's where I have it saved. So I'm going to open up my Metasploitable 2 directory, the one we just extracted. And I'm going to open that again. And you want to select the virtual the virtual machine, VM virtual machine configuration file. All right. So it's going to only show this one. Just open that up. Okay. Give it a few seconds. There we are. And uh, now we have a Metasploitable 2 ready. Uh, but before we do that, we need to configure some of the uh, physical resources that we're going to allocate to the virtual machine. Okay, so we want to edit the virtual machine settings. Right. And now here you can specify how much RAM or memory you want to uh, you want to provide to the virtual machine, how many processors you want the virtual machine to have. What I would recommend is just leaving it at what um, at what it comes set with. So it's going to use 512 megabytes of RAM, which is, uh, you know, pretty reasonable. Again, if you have a, a system with lower, with lower resources in terms of RAM, you can reduce that uh, to meet your, your current configuration. As for processors, you can select the, the amount of processor cores you want to dedicate to the virtual machine. Uh, since this is a, essentially a Linux server, I'll just leave it at what it recommends. And now you want to go to network adapter. All right. So you want to, um, we, we want to bridge the, the connection and that's because we want to connect it to our, uh, to the current network that we're going to be using. So that means we want to make sure that, uh, we can all connect with each other and your virtual machine or your host operating system can connect with your virtual machine. And we'll be seeing that in a few seconds. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna hit bridged and I want to say replicate physical uh, network connection state and hit okay. All right, now we are ready to launch. So I'm just gonna hit play virtual machine and uh, it's gonna start up the virtual machine. Uh, if it gives you this prompt to just uh, click on I copied it, okay. And it's gonna start up the virtual machine, there we are. All right, it's gonna grub, it's gonna start up the grub bootloader. There we are, fantastic. Everything's loading up as expected. All right. All right, we can now get started. So once Metasploitables 2 starts, it's gonna give you this uh, login screen and you might be a bit confused, but don't worry. The uh, credentials are MSF admin for the login or the username. And uh, so with the password, as you can see right here, it'll tell you that MSF admin. Uh, for the username and msf admin for the password so let me just enter that in msf admin and for the password the same thing whoops i think i entered the password incorrectly let me just uh there we are all right so there we are fantastic all right so we've successfully logged into metasploitable 2 and you can, again, since it's a Linux server, you can just run some of the Linux, uh, Linux uh, commands. So let me just check, uh, perform some commands here. So you name A, whoops, there we are. And as you can see, Linux Metasploitable 2, it is, uh, the, it is a Linux server. So uh, again, now uh, to test that everything's working, what we can do is we can check the uh, local IP address. All right, so let me just do that right now. We can check for the local IP address on the network for our Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. And there we are, we have actually got it. So I'm using ethernet and uh, the, ad the address is 192.168.1.107. Yours will or might be different uh, depending on the router and your network range that you currently have. Okay, so uh, 192.168.1.107, very interesting. Now, how about we actually perform a test to see whether we can actually detect some of the ports uh, running on this Linux server or the Metasploitable 2 using Nmap. All right, let's try that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this on Windows. So let me just minimize the virtual machine there. I'm going to open up my command prompt, really very simple. And uh, I'm going to hit Nmap 192.168. All right, I'm gonna enter the IP address for the uh, Metasploitable 2 virtual machine, 0 0.1, 0 0.107, and I'm gonna hit enter, and let's see what results we can get from the Nmap scan. All right, fantastic, we're getting, uh, there we are. We, put, we successfully started the scan, and we got a scan report, and this is why I was recommending that we use Metasploitable 2, is because uh, it contains all the uh, useful ports and uh, since they're open, we can actually get an idea of, of the services that are running on them. And as you can see, it's detected all the ports that are currently open and the services that are currently running on them. So we have our, uh, we have our FTP port, our Telnet port, we have our shell port, our MySQL database port, our PostgreSQL port, etc., etc. So th that's going to be it for this lecture. All right. And I'll be seeing you in the next lecture.